Welcome back to another edition of the Savage Kitchen. Today we're going to talk a little more about some wine and cheese. I've got four cheeses here. Eric's got four wines. And once, once again, welcome back, Eric. It's a pleasure. Always a pleasure here. to be a work chef. <laughs> no, it's not. Don't lie. <laughs> So what do we got going on here? You want to talk a little bit about some quick basics about some cheese? You know, I thought as far as our second edition of a wine and cheese pairing, maybe we should go into how to do this without us. Um, <laughs> some good rules of thumb that you could utilize to make really good pairings yourself. Generally, the younger the cheese, the lighter body the wine, and I recommend starting with white wines. Uh, and also the younger the cheese, as it tends to have a little sweetness, a little bit of sweetness in your wine also is a nice thing. So an off-dry style, a demi-sec style, something like that certainly works. As the cheese ages and it loses some of that sweetness, uh, usually gains a little earthy quality or some, some sense of terroir, uh, then it's nicer, it's good to use a more full-bodied wine, something with a little bit more going on. And uh, we want to veer away from the sweetness at this level because we don't want to conflict with uh, the beautiful things that are happening in the cheese. Nice. Um, let's see, what else do you need to know? As the cheese ages, often the salt becomes a little more prominent and you taste the salt a little more. And in a wine, acid is a beautiful balance to a salty flavor. Um, just it tries to, it tends to accentuate the qualities of both without covering up or exacerbating either of their weaknesses. Nice. Shall we finish? We'll finish up with red wines. Uh, red wines are a little harder to pair with cheese, easier in the case of a very sweet cheese or a very, very aged, robust cheese, but certainly nothing to do without a little bit of experience. Um, that stated, a very young cheese that's lighter bodied likes the acidity in, a, in red wine, and it doesn't like the tannin so much. Right. So we don't want a big, chalky, chewy red wine. We want something a little more fresh, bright, and crisp. Maybe Pinot Noir, maybe Gamay from Beaujolais, something a like that. Fruit component to that. Fruitier, better acid, and we don't want that big chalky dry feeling. As the cheese ages, however, they really do like the tannins in red wine. So now we're talking big chewy, a big tannic fat wine. You can think of Australia, you can think of California. Uh, tends to complement a more robust cheese. Right. So that's stated. Now I'm sure everyone can make a, an accurate cheese pairing on your own and go to. Whole foods and enjoy yourselves <laughs> and if not we're always here to help but what we're going to talk about here is i've got a nice gruyere cheese uh, out of switzerland this is a cow's milk cheese um, one of my favorites it's really nice it's got a nice tone to it what do you what do you think about pairing with that one Eric? gruyere uh certainly in its youthful aspect is a buttery creamy cheese and when we're talking about the medium to light bodied semi-sweet wine is going to be a really good compliment along that lines you could try maybe Torrantes from say the Salta region in Argentina you could also try something along the line of a domestic Muscat um, and you're going to see that you just have some nice aromatics um, and and a little bit of sweetness and not too heavy a bodied wine for for that particular actually I've got I didn't I didn't pick out a Riesling for that one uh, as it ages now this is the beautiful beautiful pairing of Gruyere as it ages and it develops a nice earthy quality, mm -hmm. uh, more full-bodied white wine is fantastic with it, um, but not too much oak. You really want to let that cheese throat show through. Uh, for that, Chablis, I think this is a match made in heaven. Stainless steel fermented, old world Chardonnay that has a really defined earthy quality and a chalky quality. And, and that's just, uh, these two are of an equal weight and they dance. Like me and my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Cheesy. <laughs> Next one that I've picked out here is we got a we have this nice cotilla. This is a Mexican cheese. This is another uh, cow's milk cheese. The, my thing with this one, it's got a little salty flavor. What are you What are you working with there? You put your finger on it, chef. The salty cheese it demands a certain type of wine. Uh, what we're looking for here is high acid, and no sweetness. Otherwise, we'll just accentuate that salty quality. So for that reason, we can go to the Alsace region of France, as I have here with the Schlumberger Riesling. Uh, Domaine Schlumberger, a, a really great quality producer um, of very dry, very tart Rieslings. There you go, go ahead and put your nose to that. And you'll get a little bit of a mineral quality, but a very, very light, delicate wine uh, with great acidity. Um, very nice. You know another fantastic pairing with Cotilla cheese? Eh, maybe not a wine. Would that be this right here? <laughs> That's yeah, that's, that's hours later, and for now, as demonstration, a nice light beer that has the fresh acidity of lime 
is a classic pairing with cotilla cheese. I uh, served this myself last night. I did um, some catfish tacos, crumbled cotilla cheese, Coronas with limes, and it was a beautiful pairing. Sounds wonderful. All right, next one we're gonna go into is we're gonna go into this Manchango right here. This one's out of Spain, and it's a used milk cheese. So what's your thoughts going into that? Well, I certainly prefer used milk to ram's milk, and in this okay. central area of Spain, <laughs> they do a beautiful, beautiful sheep's milk cheese. Uh, Manchego is from the La Mancha region of Spain, and it is aged anywhere from two months to two years. When it's young, again, a little sweeter style, a little less of the earthy components. Certainly as it ages, it develops some big, full, robust, earthy qualities. Um, while white wine is usually easier to pair with any cheese, this, this certainly does well with a variety of the indigenous red wines of Spain. Uh, just north of La Mancha, we have uh, Rioja and Ribera del Duro. And these are wines that are primarily crafted out of Tempranillo, local varieties of Tempranillo and Grenache. Well, that's gonna be this one here. That is that one right there. And you'll notice, maybe even taste that one, uh, really ripe fruit, and it's got some leathery qualities and a little bit of sweet tobacco, maybe cigar box on it. It certainly complements the Manchego as it ages. Very nice. Also, you're steering away from acidity in this wine. It's a hot, dry area, and you get really nice, smooth tannins, and you're getting away from the tart acidity that you really don't want with an aged cheese. Nice, very nice. Last one, we've got some of my favorites. I love a good blue cheese. We've got the Roaring Forties blue cheese over here. Uh, this is a new one for me. It's really, um, haven't heard a lot about this. I had to try it out. This one's from King Island in Tasmania. Uh, it's a little softer, the blue. What do, what do you think on that one? Everybody needs to know this cheese. Uh, the Roaring Forties Blue is a blue cheese made from cow's milk that is only aged four, maybe five weeks. At that point, they dip it into that black wax and they completely stop the aging process. So have this in your refrigerator. It's not going to get any more dry, more pungent, more full flavored. And it's always going to have that creamy texture and the really delicate sweetness. Seems very subtle. I mean, super subtle. The blue, yeah. the blue cheese mold that they use in this is a very delicate blue cheese mold, and it really does not. This is a, a perfect intro to blue cheese, and can open up a whole world for people that haven't had it. With its sweetness, this dessert? is a young sweet wine. It's a beautiful dessert cheese. I mean, I'll take it on a burger anytime. But <laughs> if you serve this at the end of the meal, right. uh, a little nutty quality also in the cheese, tawny port. We've got uh, Taylor Flaggate Tawny Port here. Lots of really beautiful ports, yeah, right up there. And this just has a beautiful mirroring and a beautiful echo of the sweetness and the nuttiness of the Roaring Forties itself. A little alcohol in there too, huh? Another beautiful aspect we've got going here, that alcohol can be somewhat mitigated by the really, really creamy, youthful nature of the Roaring Forties. So just that, that truly is a pair made in heaven and it needs to be tried. Very nice. Well, we certainly hope that you have the opportunity to try these uh, wine and cheese pairings. And if it's a little too much work, please come in. This is the chef and my bread and butter. This is what we do every day, and we'd love to show you what, what we do. Eric, thank you once again. And remember, read Eric's wine blog on thecliffhouse.com. Go to YouTube and share this with your friends on Facebook. And remember, we got season one and season two of The Savage Kitchen on thecliffhouse.com. Thanks, everybody.